All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into the first edition, a very special edition of Ludi's Look Back. My name is Nick Luttrell. Last name is Luttrell. That's why we got the name here, Ludi's Look Back. That's, that's my nickname. It was first called by my dad. Now it's my name. It, it, it doesn't matter. What matters is it's a first edition. It is a very special edition, and I'm excited to be able to bring you the sports and what you missed this past weekend and everything sports, whether it be Razorbacks or Bears or Golden Lions or high school. We've got a lot to catch up on, and it's just a pilot episode. I should warn you. It's a pilot episode. This could be the one and only episode you ever see me doing this, and then it's gone, or this could be a tradition. We do it from a week on for, a, for every, every Monday morning from here on out. I honestly don't know, but I'm excited to get it started. And we'll talk the Hogs' 24 to 14 win at Auburn. We'll hear from head coach Sam Pittman as well. We'll check in uh, what happened with UCA, UAPB football, as well as Arkansas State and Division II ranks. We won't forget about you guys in the GAC. We'll talk some high school football as well. We'll have the sweetest play because why not have the sweetest play? Take a quick glance at NFL, and then we'll do some non-football updates with uh, the Arkansas Travelers. Maybe even touch on the Razorback soccer team who's doing really well right now, and possibly some volleyball. We'll see if we have time for that a little bit later on. But first, let's start with those Razorbacks. How about them? Going on the road, taking down Auburn 24-14. And man, this was a Razorbacks team that, all right, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. Let's just put it how, how it is. But on the road, SEC win. I will take that every day of the weekend. Uh, you, you guys, I don't know, people watching might know me by now. My parents are probably watching, maybe a few others out there. I'm a guy who grew up in this state. I'm a Razorback fan, so... I, uh, you know, there's a little bit of bias to how I talk about the Razorbacks, but, uh, you know, they won the game. They won the game, and that's all you can ask. And how about the defense really stepping up big in this one? And as we'll always do with my Ludies look back, I'll give you my three big takeaways, three big things from Saturday's game, and let's take a look at them. Taylor Green is my first thing to talk about. 12 of 27, 151 passing yards, one touchdown, and those two interceptions. We saw good and bad Taylor Green, as I think we're going to do throughout this season. We saw it in this game. He ran the ball so well. I don't have his rushing yards up there. That's on me. I'm the one who made all these graphics and everything. I should have put his rushing yards up there. I think he got close to 100 yards maybe somewhere in the 70s, but he played well running the ball, not as much passing. He had those two interceptions. One of them not as much his fault, but definitely struggled in certain areas of this game. One possession, one drive, he was out of the game. Coach Pittman did say it was because of cramps. He did not get benched. I do want to preface that because I think some people thought he got benched for a drive. That's not what happened according to Sam Pittman, but enough talk about Taylor Green. How about Jaquindon Jackson? Only 75 rushing yards, but two touchdowns. The ground and pound really worked for the Razorbacks in this one. There wasn't a lot of huge rushing yards or rushing gains, I should say, that Jaquindon Jackson had, but the guy from the transfer from Utah really played well in this one with those two goal line touchdowns. And then really the story of the game, the defense forced five turnovers in this, in this one. They stole the show. TJ Metcalf, if he's not an SEC de defensive player of, of the week or National def Defensive Player of the Week. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing here, and uh, so those those are my three big takeaways. Defense played really well in this one. Let's hear from Sam Pittman with his takeaways from the game. You know, we told 74 guys we're going to go win. We've got a better team, and I don't mean that cocky or anything. I just felt like we could come in here and win. But those things are easier said than done. Defense, Coach Williams and those guys had them playing lights out. Offensively, uh, when they did score, I, th I thought we did a great job of, of driving 75 yards to score to go up 10. Didn't put the game away, but it was close. <laughs> we have to go beat Texas A&M, you know. Um, um, but what it does, it, you know, it gives you a shot in the arm. You know, it makes you feel good and makes practicing a little bit easier. And and uh, but. Uh, just because I believe that we've got a really good team and we can go win on the road, you have to go do it. We've got a lot to work on, but man, it feels good to win. And uh, we'll work. Uh, gosh, guys, it, it feels good. All right, say what you want about Sam Pittman, but 
he's a lovable guy. I mean, he keeps it honest with fans when they're losing and when they're winning. And you just saw him in that post game press conference. He said it multiple times, guys. It feels good to win, like almost breathing a sigh of relief like Hog fans are doing after that one as well. Pittman in his fifth season, it, it's do or die year for him, really. And he knows he had to have he knew he had to have that game for the Hogs in order to be bowl eligible. I guess they didn't have to, but it was really important for Arkansas to beat Auburn in order to be bowl eligible. Now they got A&M coming up this up this this weekend, so we'll see how that goes. But man, this one, it, it was a special one. The Hogs never seem to win these these close games and, and they did in this one. Travis Williams, the, the, obviously Arkansas's defensive coordinator, an incredible coaching performance just by him. His, his return to Auburn, he obviously he played there, he coached there. Another guy who kind of has those Alabama ties, it's TJ Metcalf. He's from the state. He had two interceptions, two passes broken up, a forced fumble. Like I said earlier, should be the defensive player of the week in the SEC. I, I hope it's not one of those co-defensive player of the weeks. I hope it is him because he absolutely deserves that. We'll have to see coming up later today, but uh, flipping from the defense to the offensive side, just to give you a little bit of more of my expert analysis as we kind of move on here. Andrew Armstrong, he's second in the SEC in receiving yards, receiving yards per game and receptions per game. And remember, he didn't even play in the game against UAPB. He's only played three games so far for the Razorbacks, and he's one of the top receivers in the SEC, at least statistically speaking. And Taylor Green has been able to find him a lot, and I think that's something that the Hogs can use down the stretch. I, I do think it is important to note that they need to find somebody else besides Armstrong and to get Luke has available. Broden needs to get going, but nonetheless, Armstrong played a good game and he's been hot this year for the Razorbacks. So it's fun to see him doing so well for Arkansas. All right, let's move on now from the Hogs to UCA and UAPB, the Bears. Get the 56 to 17 win over the Golden Lions. It was only 14 to 10 at the end of quarter one. And so UAPB, I'll give them credit. They really hung around in this one and played a good game as far as the fourth quarter or the first quarter. And then uh, the Bears kind of ran away with it. But give credit. All this year, UCA has played such a good running game, and they definitely did. And this one, Darius Hill had three rushing touchdowns, add on another passing one. But Will McIlvain is often forgotten about, I feel like, with this Bears team. In the first half, he didn't have a single incompletion. He was 15 for 15, had over 200 yards, threw a touchdown. McIlvain is the real deal, so it's going to be really fun to watch him go at it throughout the rest of this season. Like I said, rushing was really good. Shunderick Powell has been so good. The, the team had 566 yards of total offense. And again, I know it was against UAPB, which is kind of a, a, a bottom level UAP, bottom level FCS team right now. But nonetheless, still a good win for UCA. And all right, I, I've talked for so long about this game and about the Razorbacks. Let's now hear from head coach Nathan Brown of UCA after their win against UAPB. I think we came here and accomplished what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, obviously, proud of the efficiency we played with. Offensively, for sure, um, you know, we had two punts in the game, one of them late, um, and we were able to run the ball at Will, which is big, uh, and I thought we got the pass game going. Will was on point early in the game, uh, really put the ball in the receiver's hands where he needed to go, was making good reads, um, and really just a good, com uh, a complete effort. I mean, offense, defense, and special teams, uh, to come into an environment like this, even though it's close to home, it's still a road, road game for us. So uh, we knew the challenges ahead of us, and, and I thought our guys have responded well. We've continued to improve, I mean, each week. So now, now the focus has got to be, hey, we got a, we got a big one next week, and we've got to improve a lot to meet a top 25 team next week. And as Coach Brown just said there, up next for UCA at Lamar, a top 25 team, as he mentioned, should be fun there. That'll be one of the first... I don't know, besides the Arkansas State game to begin the year, a big test for the Bears. And speaking of Arkansas State, man, they had a tough one over the weekend. We saw a good win from UCA and the Razorbacks, not so much with the Red Wolves. Give credit to Butch Jones, their head coach. He went out and he scheduled a really tough non-conference. They played at Michigan last week and then at Iowa State on Saturday. Red Wolves, they hung around with the Wolverines. That was a little over a week ago and now 
Uh, they only lost by 10 points to a really good, a decently good Michigan team, not as good as people thought they were going to be this year. But in Saturday's game, A-State falls 52-7. to Jalen Rayner, a tough game for him. Only, only five completions, uh, 68 yards, two interceptions. He struggled in this one. He got benched in the second half. So I don't know if anyone watching right now wants to talk too much about the Red Wolves. They, they're a good team, but obviously struggled in that one against the Cyclones. So we'll move from college football and talk about high school now. Week three in the books. Friday night, it was a, a lot of teams took a bye. That's okay. The Friday night blitz did not. In case you watched the Friday night blitz, we did not take a bye. It was, it was a really fun show. Make sure to go back and check out our full show on THV 11 plus or the website or wherever you, you, you want to watch. But in case you missed it, here's a little scoreboard of some notable games around the area on your top left going down. Little Rock Catholic taking the 27 17 win over North Little Rock could win there for Catholic North Little Rock continues to struggle. I think they're 0 and 3 now on the year. Carlisle, a big 30-8 to win over Desark. That was the game I was at. Uh, we'll have a sweetest play from that one later on. That was pretty special, but nice win there for the Bison. Little Rock Christian taking down West Memphis 48-7 to with ease. Baptist Prep and I think what's called the, the uh, Cantrell Cup wins 26-19. to I don't know if that's an official title for that, a little bit of a rivalry game, but, uh, but definitely was a special one there. Rogers Heritage falling to Little Rock Central. How about Little Rock Central? The Tigers winning their first game in about three years. It, it's, it's taken a while, but man, it's good to see them win a ball game. And, and props to Anthony Robinson. He's, he's started to get this program at least headed a little bit in the right direction um, for this season. I mean, a win is a win no matter who it's against and no matter what point it comes in the season. We'll see what they, happens when they face off against some uh, other conference foes. Bologna getting the 28-14 win over BB Little Rock Southwest losing to Southside in their game of the week. You see there at the bottom right, Benton taking down Harding Academy 68-21. to Drew Davis, Maddox Davis, Elias Payne, the big three for the Panthers dominated in this game to win. So those are some of our notable games. How about some notable plays? Not just notable plays, but some sweet plays. Let's go. That's right, folks. It's sweetest play of the week time, and we talked about Episcopal earlier. Look at this play from quarterback Turner Harbor. Looks like he's going to go down. Uh-uh. He stays alive in this one, running down to the 20, to the 10, makes another guy miss and finds the end zone for Episcopal. Great run there. They end up losing the game, but no doubt a special play there from the young quarterback for Episcopal. Let's move on to our nomination number two right now. Des Ark and Carlisle, I talked about it earlier. This one, a big momentum play. Drops right into the breadbasket of Isaiah Powell. Powell has one guy to beat. It's the quarterback. Uh oh, he just gets past him. Somehow slips out of the tackle. Spikes the ball down because why not? Like I said, big play here for the Bison that helped them go up. I think this put them up by three touchdowns and then they never looked back from there. That's our nomination number two. Our final nomination for sweetest play, it's in War Memorial Stadium. How about this play from Catholics? Jackson Ingle. England gets absolutely rocked, but finds his receivers, his receiver in the end zone. He just hangs on to the ball and finds Pater for the Rockets. So those are your top plays, your, your sweetest plays of the week. You saw the, the two notable ones, I think, were the first two, just, just in my opinion. Those were, were crazy. You thought the guy was going to go down, and then he popped right back up and ran all the way for a touchdown. So impressive there from Episcopal, impressive from Carlisle as well. And then, yes, give credit to, uh, to the Catholic quarterback there, Jackson England, making a really good play for his team. Okay. Deep breath. You guys still with me? This was supposed to only go like 10 minutes. We're already 10 minutes in. We still got a little bit to cover. We talked college football. We talked high school. Let's go back to the college in the Division II rank. So look a quick look around for the Great American Conference. They have a host of Arkansas teams in case you missed it. The Harding Bisons, one of them. The defending national champs taking down Arkansas Monticello 63-3. Arkansas Tech losing to Henderson State. Nice win there for Henderson State. Uh, top right of your screen, OBU taking down SAU 25 to 20. And then the other OBU losing to Southeastern Oklahoma State 29 to 10. Those were the GAC. Let's look at NFL. Now let's go to that. 
Cowboys, oh no, another loss for the Dallas Cowboys. Now moving to, I think, one and two on the year, falling a three-point loss to the Ravens. They are struggling right now. We'll see how the rest of the season progresses for them. Texans also lose to the Vikings. Eagles, Saints, man, this one was a close one. Saints were right there, lost by just three points like the Cowboys. I think this one was a much closer game than the Cowboys game was. Saints only at two and one this year, so uh, not, nothing going too wrong there. And then Packers and Titans, Packers getting the win there, and Will Levis not doing so well for the Titans. Tennessee is 0-3 on the year. Okay, now football time. Let's quickly go to baseball. The Travs, they were up 5-1 in this game. This is game one of the Texas League Championship Series. They lose 10 to 8 in this one. We'll have game two, I believe. That's right, game two tomorrow night and game three if necessary after that. This was a road game for the Travelers. They'll be back at home seeking their first Texas League Championship since 2008. All right, let's finish up with some other Razorback sports. Very quickly, we've got the soccer team. Man, they're just continuing to dominate. They moved to 2-0 and in SEC play. They're undefeated in the year. They're number three team in the nation. So watch out for this Razorback soccer team come, come postseason time. I think they're 2-0, and maybe 3-0 and in SEC play so far this year. They are a special team to keep your eye out on. Another special team is Arkansas volleyball team. 10-2 and on the year. SEC play for them starts Wednesday against Georgia. They had a, 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 a tough loss um, uh, earlier this week. Weekend, but rebounded with back to back wins. So good to see them having a little bit of success. And like I said, SEC play for them starts Wednesday against Georgia. And while we look ahead for the Hog volleyball team, let's also look ahead for the Hog football team. Hogs facing off against the Texas A&M Aggies. This will be a tough one for Arkansas, but look for this one to be a crazy one because that's how it always is between both of these teams. Arkansas obviously coming off that win against Auburn A&M. Only a six-point win against Bowling Green on Saturday. We'll see how both of these teams go. The, both, both of these teams play in this game. It'll always be a stressful one. It'll always be a fun one, but I can't wait to see how that one goes down and how the show went down. Well, you, you have to let me know. I don't know. It, it, everything just flew by so fast. That, that's going to do it. The first edition of Ludi's Look Back went a lot longer than I, th I think I expected. I, I feel like once you get talking, you just keep talking if you're someone who loves sports. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We covered a lot in a very short amount of time. And like I said earlier, it could be the first, it could be the very last of Ludi's Look Back. But hey, it was a fun, it was an honor, folks, and a pleasure to do it with you. And if it, if it does continue to be a show, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook at Nick Ludi TV or Twitter. That's just at Nick Ludi, a little more uh, succinct there. I do this for you guys, so I do hope you appreciate it. I, I probably missed a lot, so I'm always open to feedback. One last shout out to my guys in the back, Perry and Chris. They're the guys behind the scenes doing everything so special that you guys at home never see. So shout out to them. Thank you for watching. We'll hopefully see you next week, next, next week same time, same place on Ludi's Look Back.